Hello and thanks for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about some new enhancements to 2021 R1 regarding business events and notifications. So here we're looking at an invoice. It's an invoice out to Amy's Bread. And when we go to the tools menu, there's an option now to see the notifications related to this form. So when we click on it, you can see all of the notifications and you can go in here and open one up, make your changes. And these are the relative notification templates for the invoice form, AR301000. So you can also see new visibility send by events. So anytime this form is used in an event, you'll be able to see it here. Notice the create business event. That's there so that you can create an event based on this form. And if we go back, so you also have the option to create an email notification or a mobile push or an SMS notification right from here. This would be relative to the invoice form that you're working on. So if we click the create button from there, notice it picks the screen for us and then we could start to write our notification template. The other thing you can do is create your business events from here. So if you check this, any business events tied to the invoice will also show up here and you can create a new one. So let's create a new one and I'll show you a new feature. So in this case, we're creating a new event. It's called email invoice. It's locked to the invoices and memo screen. But if we change this, and let's say we want to pick our generic inquiry, invoices and memos. That's a list of invoices and memos. We'll open that up. We're changing our business event to that. There's a new type here. So trigger by record change means immediately, as soon as there's change in data in the generic inquiry, we could use this to raise an event. The event would then send out a notification or perform some sort of action. Trigger by schedule means we have a schedule and we run it every so often, whether it's weekly, daily, uh, hourly, whatever it is, that's trigger by schedule. But the new one is trigger by action. So this allows us to use an action. An action is something that's part of the invoices and memo screens. So we look over here and you can see the different types of actions that are available. And when we select trigger by action, we now have this action name field here. And what we do is we type in the action name. So we'll type and here we could say for a group of records. So maybe we want to create a notification for a group of records and group it by the customer's account so that we can give them a listing of the invoices that are available, kind of like a statement. So if we go in here and we'll choose our account CD, it'll be the key field where it'll group all the invoices together. And our description will be email out invoices. And now what we'll do is we'll do an email notification We'll select our from account. And the to field, if we do the magnifying glass, this allows us to pick any field we want from the actual document. So if the invoice has different billing contact email addresses, then this could be dynamic. In this case, since we're grouping by the business account, it makes more sense to pull from the business account email. Instead, we'll just put in a static email address. And then the subject heading can be your list of invoices. Again, we can make this dynamic. We can add fields to this if we want to, but we're grouping by the business account. So the only thing that really makes sense here from a dynamic field is something related to the business account. So we could say hello and the name of the person 
invoices for and the name of the company, that's certainly an option. Now, as far as the email, we can say dear and we'll insert a data field and we'll pull it from the business account. Now, notice there is no first name, last name. So these fields are available based on the generic inquiry, AR3010 PL. That's where those fields come from. So if you want additional fields for your email notification, then you simply need to go to the generic inquiry and edit it and add those extra columns in the result grid. So that's something if you look at our generic inquiry videos, if you don't know how to do that, uh, there's a lot of good information in there on how to modify them. But in this case, we'll say account name. So that'll be the company's name. And we can say, Now, the next part of this email is going to be a table view, an HTML table view that will give a list of the invoices that are outstanding. Now, if you don't know how to create an HTML table, then what you could do to get started is we have a notification and that notification is called track package notification. It's out of the box with Acumatica. Notice the example here, and we have this in another video regarding a list of packages that are part of a shipment track. So we send out the tracking notification and there's a tracking number for each box attached to the shipment. So this is a good example. But if I were to switch this to maybe my HTML view and copy and paste, you can see here, here's the start of the table. And you can see here, the slash table ends that group. So we'll copy that, we'll go back, we'll switch this to HTML view, and then we'll paste it. And now if we switch back to our visual view, you can see that it's come out pretty nicely. Now, in some ways, it's a little difficult to get now to a new line. So what you might do is again, go back to HTML view, and we wanna add a break these are some common HTML functions. We'll go back to visual view and now your cursor, you'll be able to get it down below. So what we want to do here is change this too. It's a little easier to work in the visual view. Of course, that's a matter of preference, but we could say invoice and we could say date and we could say amount, maybe we could say due date. This again, depends on what fields we have available, but these are the headers. We're changing the header here. And then for the fields, we're looking for the invoice number. We could even put number here if we want. And we'll insert a data field and we go into invoice and we're looking for the reference number. We'll put that in there. And then for the due date, we'll get rid of this and insert the data field. And there's our due date. And then for the amount, we'll insert the data field, which is original doc amount. And then down here, we can say uh, we appreciate your prompt payment on these invoices. Okay, so we'll save this and we'll close it and we'll go back to our business event. So now we have a business event. It's tied to our list of invoices. It's we raise the event based on an action. We trigger it by an action. And the action is email invoice reminder. So what do we do here? So if we go back to our invoices and memos and we look at our list, under actions, we now have email invoice reminder. So what this lets us do is select a bunch of them 
and send out a email reminder. We could have selected all. You always get the all option, but we'll select this. And now if we go to all emails, that's our email repository where everything goes in and out. And if we open one of these emails up, we'll look at the first one that was created. You can see Dear Amy's Bread. Here's a list of the invoices, 9113, it's $1,000. And we can open up another one. So there's ABC Holdings, and there's all their invoices outstanding. So that's what this is. So business events, we go back. If we wanted to send out individual invoices, let's say we want to select every single invoice, for example, and have them go out. Sometimes a customer says, hey, can you send me those three invoices? And it's difficult to do that in Acumatica. You have to go into each one and send it. But with invoices and memos we could select the ones we want and send them out so if we wanted to we can change this instead of saying for group of records we could say for each record and if we open up the email notification we can also make a change there where we can attach the report so we click on our plus button here and we'll look for the invoice so this is the receivables printed form. Notice there's a different one for sales order invoice, but we're gonna use this one. And the report format will be PDF. And we need to add some parameters here. So our document type will be part of the generic inquiry, we'll pass that along. So we'll say doc type here. And the reference number, the actual invoice number, will be the AR reference number. And again, this is coming from the generic inquiry. Also notice I mentioned it earlier, send by events. This is showing that this notification template is being used by this event. So this is helpful. This wasn't there before, and this is very helpful to kind of figure out where is this notification template actually being used. But if we go back and we go to our list of invoices, We'll select a few of them and we'll email out. Now, if we go to all emails and we refresh a couple of times, you could see the emails that are being generated. So we're getting a different one for each. We didn't change the actual email, the body of the email here. So we just left it as a list of invoices. You would change this accordingly because again, it's only one invoice per email now. But if we click on the files here, we can see the actual invoice. And if we move it over, you can see the actual invoice that's sent. So that's it. That is business events, some changes to the forms, the ability to see notifications that are related to a form, so tools, notifications, the ability to create business events. This has been here for a couple of versions, but business events right from here, but the ability to create a trigger by action. So we fire off this business event based on the fact that from the list of invoices, the generic inquiry, we can highlight a bunch and run this action. So if you have any questions about this or any other features in Acumatica, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.